the good old humble French press. It feels like nothing has really happened with this one since, well, basically the French Revolution. But today we're going to do something about that because I have a very interesting recipe for you. And it's one that is quite different from most other approaches out there. It's also one I'm personally very excited about. So if you're worried that I'll be wasting your time and uh, just give you some rehashed uh, recipe quickly thrown together, then you can take it easy. This is a recipe with a lot of benefits. It's easy to make, relatively fast, and it also has uh, way more flavor clarity than most other recipes out there. And I'm not just talking uh, compared to other French press recipes, but also other brew methods in general. So this is quite different. Before we get into the recipe, I should probably just reveal the real reason this method is so different. And it's because we are going to use one of these ones here. Using a paper filter might feel a little bit like cheating, but it does bring so many benefits to the French press. So I think it's worth it. There's no silt in the cup, or at least way less compared to regular French press. There's also less oils, which in my opinion actually improves the flavor. And finally, it allows us to grind very fine. The French press has always been a brew method uh, that called for a very coarse grind size. And that's why it takes so long to brew. Uh, by grinding finer and uh, using a paper filter, we can do it uh, way faster. Now you might be wondering why not just brew the French press like a normal person and then strain it through the paper filter after. Well, if you've ever tried that, you know that it's not really something that's easy to do. It can take forever for the coffee to drain and it can have a kind of nasty or extracted taste with all these fines uh, being extracted for five to 10 minutes. But if you're doing it uh, this way here, and you're adding a paper filter to the plunger, then you won't have any of these issues and you'll get a much more consistent result. But now let's get to the recipe. Oh, and of course I should also mention that you do need uh, three key things if you want to succeed with this French press recipe or any French press recipe in uh, general. So of course you need good coffee, relatively soft water, if you want to learn more about good coffee water, then I'll put a link to a blog post down in the description. And finally, of course, you also need a clean French press. So if you've never taken the plunger apart and uh, cleaned underneath the mesh screen, then uh, it's probably a good time to do it right now. I'm using this Time More French press, which is uh, pretty nice. But just so you guys can see a little bit better what's going on, I'm just going to take it out of uh, this uh, protection sleeve here. And then we're just gonna brew right into the glass so you can see the small details of this technique. For this recipe, you will of course need a French press, a carafe, a spoon to stir with. It's nice to have a cup handy and you should also have a digital scale. And finally, like I mentioned, you need a paper filter. You can use most different types uh, the important thing is just that it covers the plunger fully. Start out by taking the paper filter, open it up a little bit, and then just uh, fold it together like so, and then put it into the carafe. Now I'm just going to give it a quick rinse and then preheat the brewer at the same time. And then I'm just going to scoop it out with the spoon here, and then just let it drain a little bit, and then uh, put it in the cup to cool down and then uh, discard the uh, preheat water. At this point, we just add all our coffee. I'm using 22 grams to 330 milliliters, and that's a one to 15 ratio. The grind size is quite fine. You could probably call it an AeroPress setting. So that would be around 5.5 on EasyPress or KMAX or 20 clicks on the Commandante. With French press, you need to use a little bit more coffee than you would otherwise. So I like to increase the dose with 15%. An easy way to calculate that is just to go down two steps from your normal brew ratio. So if you're normally brewing at a 1 to 17 ratio, now you should do a 1 to 15 instead. Now give it a good stir. I usually stir eight times back and forth. And it's important that you reach all the way down into the carafe to really mix uh, all the grounds and the water. Start the timer and wait one minute. Now, while the coffee is steeping, you just take your rinsed paper filter, squeeze out if there's a little bit of excess water, and then you just prepare the plunger. Just put it on like so. 
And now we're coming up to one minute. And what you're going to do is just take your spoon again and then uh, gently stir the crust. Usually three or four times is enough. And then uh, the rest of the grounds are going to sink down. And then we're going to wait one minute more. Okay, and at this point, just take the French press of the scale, insert the plancher, and you want a kind of hissing sound because that indicates that we have a really nice and snug seal to the sides of the plancher. It's important that you press the plancher down gently, so this step can take anything from 45 to 60 seconds. You don't want to disturb the grounds or risk dislodging the paper filter. And at this point we're done, but there's just one more little step that I personally like to use and that is to decant the coffee into a separate carafe. The first reason to do this is of course to stop the extraction, but I also find that it's a very good idea because the French press, it tends to be a little bit too hot to drink right away, and by decanting it, then uh, you can just pour it into the cup and then you can enjoy the coffee uh, a lot earlier, otherwise maybe you'll have to wait 10 minutes before it gets down to temperature. Also, another little nice feature is that it can give you an additional step to uh, get rid of any sediment. So if you're not using a paper filter, it's uh, also a good idea because you can trap some of the silt down in the bottom of the carafe. Wow, as you can see, it's a completely clean brew. There's no silt in there. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a nice one to drink. Mm, it just tastes really sweet, uh, balanced, a lot of clarity. Totally unlike uh, the French press I know from uh, back in the days. If uh, I had to compare it to anything, I would say it's closer to AeroPress, but it actually tends to be uh, cleaner than the regular AeroPress uh, brewing methods. And uh, I think that's because when you brew AeroPress, you kind of press the water through the puck, and that can give you some kind of solubles in the brew. Whereas with this method here, you uh, press the other way, so the coffee is already stuck in the bottom, and then you just gently filter the brew, and then you pour it up. So actually it tends to be a little bit cleaner than the AeroPress. This is a brew that is uh, quite transparent. The TDS is still high, but it's just a really clean brew with uh, low turbidity. So in that sense, it's uh, similar to uh, drip coffee. It does taste more full from that full immersion, but uh, overall, for me, this is just a really nice balance of uh, everything I want in a cup of coffee. One thing that I noticed is that if the plancher is not snug, you can end up getting a little bit of uh, silt in the cup, uh, but it will still taste way cleaner compared to regular French press. And I think it's because the paper filter really removes a lot of the oils and that gives a more focused type of uh, clarity in the cup. So as you can probably tell, I'm really excited about this recipe. And if you have enjoyed my switch or AeroPress technique in the past, then uh, definitely give this one a go. And if you love it, then consider sharing it with your coffee friends. And that is also something that will really help the channel. Of course, as always, if you have any comments or questions, you are free to drop them down below. And uh, I will also have a frequently asked questions post down below in the description. So if you want to read more and geek out a little bit, then you can click that one. That's it for today. I will see you in another coffee video very soon.